we rehearse this, this scene for an entire day. Um, and, you know, there's only one cut, which is down here. Um, but the hard part is not using any marks. We couldn't use any marks because the camera would see the marks. So Stewie, who happened to be a college soccer player, he's a steady cam operator. We had to create this athletic sort of knowledge of where we were and how we moved in space and time. So this will be the only cut when we, when we get back around to see me coming towards the house. They thought, David and everybody else thought, we were going to have to stitch this entire thing together with CGI. But um, on the ninth take, we, we got the seventh and the ninth take, but when we got when we got the final take and we nailed it, with instructions like, okay, when you do this, you need to be one inch over and Stewie, you need to be one inch back. I mean, that's how tight the, the direction was. So, you know, when we um, were shooting this and we, we kept working and working and working, you know, on, on Stuart's timing, on what, you know, what, where my movement is. Um, it became, you know, like for instance, I, I, I equate it to basketball. It's probably exactly the same with soccer, which I've never played, is like I have six brothers. When we play basketball together, I got to the place where I didn't need to know where my brothers were. I could just, I could throw a pass behind my back and I know yeah. Bill was about to dunk it, you know? That's what Stewie and I created in this moment. So like, for instance, this was tough going out here. Um, that mask is really hard to see. I needed to get to the right to the edge of, of the porch, like right to the very edge, step down with confidence. There's no marks on the sidewalk, but I had to go to the exact place that I was at so that Stewart could come in and swing around here, all right? And we're not even talking. Then I catch him, I know where he is, boom, I gotta go. So it was really all timing, but we got into this perfect flow together, um, so much so that um, when we nailed it, when we finally nailed it, David Gordon Green came running across and he goes, we fucking got it, man. He gave me a great big bear hug. He's half my size. He gave me a great big bear hug. This thing too, like, whoa, boom. I see him peripherally, then I go. You know, so there's no, um, there were no, there were no vocal cues and it was just really, um, you know, all about timing. Then when we get down here and I look in and this was all about me, if, you know, if I could see my reflection in the, in the, uh, in the glass, then the camera could too. So, you know, like if, if cameras, you know, watching this going on, then when I walk down the stairs, and this was lit obviously to have, um, you know, maximum effect in, in terms of the shadow, right? As soon as my shadow leaves this, dude, I haul ass. I sprint, <laughs> sprint like, to get into the back to make it to my mark in time. And literally I get there just in time to see her do this. And to be honest, this kill, if I were gonna kill somebody, this is exactly how I'd do it. <laughs> why waste it's time, just, man? It's so brutal, it's just such, this is why I wanted this scene as well. It's just showing your animalistic, like predator hunter, like you're scanning for weapons, you know, picking up, just moving. It's just, as you said, the cue, it just looks like, it looks like a lion just hunting almost. Well, it's interesting you say that because um, when David Green cast me, um, so David calls me, goes, okay, so Jimmy, I, you know, I love the way you move. I, I, I want this to be really cat-like. And I was like, it's kind of funny, man, because my cat Parsifal is sitting in my lap right now. And, you know, Parsifal, I named a, as a cross between Percival of the Arthurian legend and Parsifal, which was the, you know, the, the Teutonic Grail Knight, the, you know, Wagnerian Percival, Parsifal, um, is the only Grail Knight that was badass enough and pure enough to attain the grail, the, the grail, which was, you know, Christ of consciousness in, in some mythologies. So, um, and my cat, Parsifal, was a, was a stray um, that no, when I moved into the neighborhood, people said, you can't touch him, you get near him. Dude, within a month, he's hanging out with me. Within two months, he's sleeping on my bed every night, you know? <laughs> um, but I watched him chase down raccoons. Like, I watched him chase four raccoons once. They were, and they're twice his size. And they were scared shitless. I went, ah, dude, this is gonna be a vet bill. They <laughs> chase him around the corner. Then he comes back, swiping at the biggest one, right on his right on his ass, man. And I went, oh, man, this is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take him to the vet. Then he comes just trotting up, stairs, turns around, sits down next to me, starts purring. I was like, okay. So I watched him a lot. 
a lot. I watched him hunt rats and I watched him hunt, um, you know, like uh, roof rats in the city and uh, squirrels. Dude was stealth. And that's, that's the kind of thing that, you know, so it's interesting you say that because it's that cat-like quality that David asked me to bring, but I had studied a cat when I did their kinder store. That was sort of the movement that I sort of emulated. Oh, you know I didn't I mean? know that. <laughs> no, yeah. that's interesting. So thank you for acknowledging that actually, because that's, you know, that's, um, that was the intention. That was David's intention. And that was, that, you know, Parsifal is, is my mood, my muse, you know, when it comes to, uh, I, mean, I know Nick has, uh, you know, Michael Meowers, but I think Parsifal would kick his ass personally. <laughs> That was a really good video as well. I mean, we we whole thing about timing. You timed your commentary to perfection as well. Yeah, I don't have to pause beautiful. it. You knew your beats, so you let <laughs> it over to your commentary as well. That was really. Yeah, good. I mean, I'll tell you, man. It took us a, a, a full day, like twelve hours of rehearsal, and then we had you know twelve hours of shooting to finally nail that one that one that one take that we got. Um, and people don't realize, you know, if you don't work on films, you don't realize sometimes just for, you know, for three seconds or five seconds or 12 seconds, you've worked hours or days. Yeah, so much work. You know, people don't get how much, how exacting it is. And especially when you're working with somebody like David Green, who knows, I mean, he knows when you got it. And if you don't got, if you haven't got it, if you haven't gotten it yet, he knows it. And he might not even know what that is. is. <laughs> He's going to find it. You know what I mean? No, that's brilliant. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Fun stuff, dude. <laughs>